Hey, first grade friends and families, it's Miss Burns. Welcome back to week six, day two of our math lessons. This week we're continuing in our unit on geometry. We know that geometry is the study of shapes and we are focusing on partitioning or cutting shapes into smaller equal pieces. We will be working still in 1G3, that's our standard, and we're partitioning shapes in halves today. You might have heard somebody say before, can I have half of that? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna be working on today, building off of what we learned about equal parts yesterday. So here are I can statements. I can partition rectangles. Rectangles include squares, squares are also rectangles, and circles into halves. So we're gonna be partitioning or cutting rectangles, squares, and circles into halves. And we're also going to be able to describe half as half of the whole. Let me show you a little bit about what I mean. All right, friends, yesterday we started talking about equal parts, and we said that equal parts are the same shape and size. Unequal parts are not the same shape and size. And as we are partitioning our shapes or cutting them into parts, we want to make sure that we have equal parts, or whether that's two equal parts, which is what we're working on today as we cut or partition into halves, or four equal parts that will come on Thursday when we're talking about fourths and quarters, okay? So we're looking to partition into equal parts and you always start with the whole. The whole is the entire thing or all of it. And we're looking today to be able to partition the whole into a half, okay? Let's talk a little bit more about what that looks like. The whole is all of it. You get the whole entire thing, okay? When you get the whole, you don't have to cut it. There's no partitioning. But today we're focusing on the center piece, or actually look how it's partitioned into three pieces or thirds. We're looking at the center piece or the center third of our chart that explains halves. Halves, or one half, is two equal parts. It's very important that we note that these parts are equal. So we can cut squares, circles, or rectangles into two equal parts. I can go across or horizontally. I can go up, up and down or vertically. I can also go across from corner to corner. If you had a brownie to share, you could think about starting with a square brownie and splitting it or partitioning it down the middle in order to have halves or give one half of your brownie half of the whole to your friend. Now let's take a look at what this really looks like in real life. So I'm just erasing my board for a second. Some real life teaching, my friends. Okay, now you guys that are in my class know that I love chocolate. You know this about me, so of course I have it around the house. This is a whole chocolate bar. It's the whole. It's all of it. But let's say that I want to partition or break this whole chocolate bar into two equal pieces or two equal parts so that I can share it with Samir. For those of you who don't know, Samir is my husband, so he's here with us. Well, if I want to break it into two equal pieces, I'm going to break it in half. So I can snap it down the center and I have one half. We have a lot of chocolate around here, friends. Two halves. Each of these represents one half of the whole. Here's one half, and here is my other half. When I put my two halves or my two equal parts together, I get a whole. Now I can be absolutely sure that these two parts are equal in a few different ways. I could stack them on top of each other, and if the one on top hides the one on the bottom, they are the exact same size and shape. These Hershey bars are fun because they've actually already partitioned the bar for you, so you can be sure that you get the same number of pieces. If I get one, two, three, four, five, six rectangles or equal parts or pieces, Samir should also get six. One, two, three, four, five, six. These are two equal of our whole. Okay, let's take a look at what this can look like with some of our math tools. Okay, that chocolate smells good, friends. 
let's look at a circle. So we have a circle, and I know that I can take a circle and I can partition or break it into two equal parts. Well, there's many different ways I could do that. I could go across the middle like this. I could go up and down or vertically to cut this into halves or two equal parts, half of the whole. Or I could even go side to side across like this. Now keep in mind, friends, that it does not matter what direction that partition is in. I could even move these around and you'll see it doesn't matter how this is partitioned, where that partition line is, as long as I have two equal parts that together make my whole. Please pardon the noise in the background. I have a herd of cats that are stampeding. This one part is half of my whole. I could talk about this part right here being half of my whole, or this part here being one half of my whole. So we have partitioned a circle into halves. When halves are put together, we make our whole. Let's look at one more shape. This one's, I think, almost the most fun because there's so many different ways you can do it. Let's look at a square. So we've got a square and we can partition or cut this square up into two equal parts, but in different ways. So imagine it's that brownie or a sandwich. You might like your sandwich to be cut up and down into two equal parts one half and one half of my whole. You might like your sandwich or your brownie to be cut across the middle. One half, one half put together makes my whole. Or you might be like my mom with sandwiches and this is how I do it. I cut diagonally from corner to corner. Notice that even though we're using different shapes, right here my half looks like a rectangle, over here, my half looks like a triangle. There are still two equal parts that are put together to compose, remember that word from last week, compose, a whole. Here is, this rectangle is one half of my whole. This rectangle is one half of my whole. This triangle is one half of my whole. So friends, when you click into your form, you're going to have to be able to identify whether I have divided something into halves or two equal parts. And make sure that you are saying that that is one half of the whole. Tomorrow, we're gonna take another look at partitioning shapes into halves, and we're gonna do it using iReady as a tool to help us. Thanks so much, friends, and we'll see you tomorrow.